Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully. Sabrina, unfortunately, we can't hear you. We can't hear your audio. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. You sound awesome. Okay. Great. Um, unfortunately, it says my internet is unstable. So guys, let me just say this up front. I have given them a run for their money. Anything that could go wrong today has gone wrong. So this is going to go in my story bank. Um, so hopefully as we go through this, um, we will not get the unstable internet. Um, we will, you will be able to hear me and all of those things. So let me um, ask for grace right up front. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about leading with purpose, how to use storytelling to engage your board. And as we get into this, I just want to share a little bit about myself. Um, yeah, we all, we've all had those days. Thank you for that, for that grace. Um, so, um, and because I'm having a little tech difficulty, uh, Celine is advancing the slides for me. So I want to be very full disclosure on that. And so a little bit about me, I studied political science and public administration. I obtained a nonprofit management certification from Harvard Business School, and I'm a certified consultant, coach, facilitator, and best-selling author who helps nonprofits and small businesses build relationships that increase revenue. And I've been in a nonprofit industry for 25 years, um, and that's a long time. And what I want to let you know is what I do is I do training, webinars and workshops, keynote speaking, leadership, board and strategic planning retreats, executive and fundraising coaching and consulting. And so when on the introduction slide, if you know it, um, I was repelling, I was um, swimming with the dolphins or hiking, um, skydiving. And that's because sometimes you have to step outside of your comfort zone, right? And so a part of the storytelling journey and engaging your board with st storytelling might require you to step outside of your comfort zone. But every time you step outside of your comfort zone, there's some great learning. And so I wanted you to be aware of that. I've stepped out of my comfort zone many of times um, and have had some great opportunities. So go with me on this journey. And so as we get into this, I wanted you um, with the next slide. I really wanted to uh, share with you that the power of story, storytelling and leadership, there is power there. And true leadership is about inspiring and motivating others towards a common goal. And one powerful tool that you have is storytelling. And that storytelling allows you to connect on an emotional level. It makes the messaging more memorable and impactful because you can give a lot of um, data, statistics, but if you don't wrap it up in a story, right, people won't remember that. And so by sharing stories uh, that illustrate values and the mission of your organization, you can really engage your board and inspire them to take action. And these stories can be personal anecdotes, they can be case studies, they can even be fictional narratives that convey a deep, deeper meaning. Uh, but the key is to make the story relevant to the board and to tie it back into the organization's purpose. And so lucky for you, um, that is one of my superpowers. Um, I am a story, uh, building relationships is one of my superpower. I'm a storyteller. Um, and so I even uh, got a chance to write a book about it. Um, and I got to write a book with uh, Jack Canfield and I talk about the build approach. And what we're going to talk about today is the I, which is really inspire them. That's what you're trying to do when you are talking about storytelling. And I used this approach for over 15 years as the CEO of a nonprofit organization. And I increased my annual operating budget again from $750,000 to 2.5 million, completed a $12 million capital campaign, um, started and grew an endowment to a half a million and had 180 days of cash reserves. And my organization was along the Texas-Mexico border in the third poorest county in the United States. And so I say that to say that um, a, lot of, a lot of times like our rural organizations or our organizations that are not in an area that has like big corporations, which I was not in that area, Sometimes we, we say those things and we give ourselves an excuse. Well, you know, if I was in a large city, then I would have a lot of support. Or if I was 
wasn't in such a rural area that I would have a lot of support. And I'm going to push back on that and I'm going to challenge you. And so that's where the comfort zone comes from, stepping outside of the comfort zone. So let's talk about bills. Let's talk about inspire them. Just look at your board meetings. You got to look at your board meetings as cheerleader sessions, not just another meeting, a boring meeting that you have to go to, right? That every month is on the calendar or every quarter or whatever that is. You have to fire up your board for them to take action. You want to fire them into action. So look at your board meetings as cheerleading sessions. And that's not oftentimes how we look at our board meetings. So change that mindset. And so the objective here today is I want you to walk away from here understanding how important storytelling is in board engagement. I want to be you to be able to identify different types of stories and when to use them and develop a storytelling strategy for board engagement. It does have to be intentional, right? So let's get into understanding the importance of storytelling and board engagement. So again, this is about storytelling. We're focusing in on storytelling. That's why I love what Memory Fox does. So, and by the way, I too am a veteran. I forgot to mention that. So I really am passionate about this organization. So what is storytelling? So sharing stories that illustrate the impact of your organization's work and the difference it makes in people's lives. That is what storytelling is. And so as you go on that journey uh, with the storytelling, you, you need to also understand why is storytelling important, right? And so there's several reasons that uh, storytelling is important. One, again, it creates an emotional connection. Storytelling creates an emotional connection between the speaker and the audience. By sharing a personal experience, it is easier for board members to relate to the speaker and the organization's mission. Uh, it's memorable and impactful. Stories are memorable and impactful. By using storytelling techniques, board members are more likely to remember the key message of the organization, which can lead to increased engagement and better decision making. Um, it builds trust. Storytelling helps build trust between board members and the organization. Um, by sharing authentic and transparent stories, board members can see the impact of the organization's work and feel confident in supporting it. And then it inspires action. That's what the I is. You want to inspire action. Stories have the power to inspire actions. When board members are emotionally invested in the organization's mission, they are more likely to take action to support it, whether it's through fundraising, advocacy, or volunteer work. And so, Let's get into um, what types of stories there are to tell, right? So there are many types of stories that you can tell. And so origin stories. I know one of the pre-questions was, um, so I just started my organization, so I don't have any stories to tell, like client stories. So I always say start with your or origin stories. You started this organization for a reason. Share that story. And these stories really tell the founding story of an organization, how it came to be, and what inspired its creation. They can help connect board members with the organization's roots and give them a sense of purpose. Now, you started your nonprofit for those that are startup. You started your nonprofit for a reason. Um, and a lot of times, it's an impactful story. I know a lot of nonprofits and have worked with a lot of nonprofits, right? And so many of them, the founders are motivated by they're doing it in their mother's honor, or they lost a child to cancer, or um, they were poor when they were growing up and technology changed their lives. These are real life stories that are coming to mind. And so those store, founder stories need to be told. It doesn't have to always be from the client perspective, especially when you're starting out. So I want you to remember that. There are impact stories. So these stories um, showcase the impact of the organization's work on the individual or communities. 
but they can be used to demonstrate the organization's value and to motivate board members to continue to support the organization's mission. Their success stories. Are you celebrating your accomplishments? Um, you need to celebrate your accomplishments, whether it be a successful fundraising campaign or a new program launch. They can help inspire board members to work towards achieving their own success. Board members need to hear about the success. Your board meetings should not be just a series of, well, we need money or we need to fundraise. Okay, you have to tell your board members and share with them, why are you fundraising, right? Here's a success story. We were able to service this many clients or we were able to launch this new program and this is how it benefits. You have to share those stories. It just can't be the, the need in the forefront all the time. Why are we doing this? Inspire them. You can have data-driven stories. Now, data-driven stories are statistics and other forms of data to illustrate the organizational impact. These stories can be used to showcase the value of the organization's work and help board members understand the impact of their support. Now, you notice how I said statistics, right? I'm not a statistic person. You can kind of see that, but you need to speak the language of everyone. And so if you have a diverse board, some people really like the stories, but some people listen to the data. But in presenting the data, it doesn't have to be boring, right? It, it could be a PowerPoint which, uh, with pictures of the, of the mission in action and have that statistics next to it. So if you, for example, um, if you do a, a certain program, you can have a picture of your clients actually involved in that program. And then next to it, you can say, okay, here are the pre and post test results. Here's how many people were involved in, in that program. Um, because you need to speak multiple language. And when I'm saying multiple language and storytelling, these are all the different languages that you need to speak because everybody is not going to respond to the emotional piece. Some people like data. And so you have to speak all those different languages. Again, I'm not a data person. So give me a picture. Give me a picture and beside it, give me some data points and I'm happy and I will, I will go with you. Um, so, and then the person who likes data, they're happy too because they get their data points. So there's personal stories. These stories are personal narratives that share an individual experience with the organization or its mission. They can be used to create an emotional connection between the speaker and the audience and help board members relate to the organization on a diff, uh, deeper level. So also um, future stories. Oh, I love future stories. Uh, future stories, these stories, they paint a picture of the organization's future vision and goals. They can help inspire board members to work towards a common goal and feel invested in the organization's long-term success. I will tell you that is how I got a uh, got my board to launch a capital campaign, right? It was a combination of a couple of things. And so as we get into how what these story types look like and how uh, what what do you do, I'll share with you exactly how we got I got them inspired up so that they could do this $12 million capital campaign. Because before that, it was an impossibility. That was their thought. That was their thought process. It was an impossibility. But my job was to inspire them. So as we get into the next PowerPoint, let's really talk about those mission moments. And that's how you inspire them. And so with these mission moments, um, as we get into it, you can use mission moments um, as impact stories. So remember, we talked about the different types of stories. So use mission moments as impact stories. So how do you do that? Clients, invite someone in who has benefited from your service to share their impact story with the board. So mission moments, um, as a part of my standard agenda, I delegated five minutes at the top of the agenda, very top of the agenda, Alpha Quorum, of course, five minutes was a mission moment, five minutes. That's where I had a client come in. 
Now I serve kids, so cute kids come in and they and they, and they talk about you know why they're there, um, what the after school program means to them, all of those things. But I also serve on a museum board, and they do mission moments. They are different. Right, so they'll have like um, exhibits up around the room, and um, you can see those. If you're an art institute, you can have artwork around the room. If you are an animal um, shelter, bring a, a animal in. I had a zoo that brought in a snake, and they started off every board meeting, every committee meeting with a mission moment. It connects it back in. It engages people. So you could also have guest speakers. You can invite an alumni in. You can invite a donor, a vendor, a funder, or key collaborator to share their experience with the mission. You can invite staff in. Invite your program staff, if you have program staff, to talk about their role with the organization, what they're working on, who they're um, touching, and how the board supports you know, how the board helps support their work and make it possible. And then if none of those work, let's say you're really start up and you don't, you haven't had the clients yet and you're, you're the founder and you're just getting started, you can do videos. You now, videos are very inspirational. You can share videos of mission um, impact of your organization and talk about where you want to be um, in that. But more importantly than that, I always push back with uh, people um, as far as video who says, you know, where our client is very confidential, maybe you work at a battered women's shelter, or some people say, I don't want to exploit my clients, so maybe you work with the unhoused, and I say that's where video come in, because you just have to get creative, and you have to tell the story from a different perspective, and I always give this example, and so I'm saying, if you're a battered spouse shelter, tell the story of the bag that's packed in the closet, um, that's ready um, to activate when you are ready to activate. Tell the story from that bag. Um, if you are, you know, uh, working with the unhoused, tell the story from that box, right? That box that that person lived in then it becomes the, the moving box into their permanent home or into their first apartment or into their apartment after being you know, unhoused. So you just have to get creative around that. So I, no snakes, please, I just saw that. Yeah, snakes freak me out. But af after being able to touch a snake, see a snake, feel a snake, you know, uh, guess what? You will go out and you'll talk about that um, with uh, people and, and you'll happen to be talking about the organization and the zoo. So impact presentation, mission moments as data stories, impact presentation. So create presentations that showcase the results of your organization's effort. The presentation should include specific examples of how your organization work has made a difference as well as data and statistics that support um, those claims. So for me, and I like using myself as an example, right? Because what better example? So for my board meetings, very strategic. I started the board meetings off with mission moments, right? And I had clients. And then I ended them with data stories. And data stories was the PowerPoint presentation that I spoke about earlier. It had engaging pictures of my um, clients with the statistics beside it. How many kids were served in that program? What were the pre and post test results? Um, even some testimonials from the kids. So that satisfied that data driven person as an impact. And you'd be very strategic about um, who the client is and when they come in and what they talk about. So I had kids, so I get it. It was easier, but you, you need to, also kind of you need to be strategic about it so when i say strategic about it so i wanted my board to get inspired to build a building because our building flooded every time it rained and so when i had the kids go in and i would say you know what you need to you know tell them who you are what school you go to all that but you also need to tell them um how it makes you feel when you come to this building and it's raining 
and it's flooded. And so I would I would prep my kids to talk about that, right? And then the board would ask them some questions, and they would ask them like, um, "What do you like best about coming here? What do you um, dislike about coming here?" So when it got to the dislike question, the kids were ready. They were like, "I hate it coming here when it rains because of floods, and uh, we get wet, and our feet get wet, and you know, all of this stuff." And they really painted a good picture of it. And so that really inspired my board members for that future vision of what I was talking about. We need a building. We got to have a building because it's unfair to our kids that who are already from challenging circumstances to have to come in here and be a part of this flooded building. Because what are we saying to them? Are we saying to them that this is all that they are worth? And so you have to be strategic in those moments. And so mission moments as um, Mission moments as impact stories, start them off there, and then end your meetings with mission moments as data stories. And you can get this done in an hour and a half meeting. Why? Because it's five minutes at the top and five minutes at the bottom. We're not talking about a lot of time. So it's worth the time to engage your board members. And so with the next slide, as we get into this, I love this. It's called Moments for Mission. Now, moments for mission is a little bit different from mission moments. So moments for mission as personal stories. This is where you're very strategic and hopefully you're working with your board chair. Board chairs, if I have any board chairs in the room, this is critical um, that you be on board with this, pun on the word board, that you be on board with this. But if I just have my CEOs in the room, my executive directors, talk to your board chair about this approach. So I wrote the steps here because I want you to completely understand this. So you select an individual board member to lead the mission moment and notify them in advance, one to two weeks, giving them time, right? So you're going to instruct that selected board member to prepare by choosing one of the following options. Share a personal story about why they support the organization. Share a fundraising strategy they've used successfully. Report on a conversation that they had with someone in the community about the organization's work. And you're gonna encourage that selected board member to, uh, to practice their presentation if they get nervous and ensure it aligns with the mission's values, uh, with the organization's mission and values. Allow time during the board meeting for the selected board member to deliver their mission moment. And then the board chair will facilitate a brief discussion or reflection on the presentation of the mission moment to encourage engagement and participation from all board members. And you repeat the process for each subsequent meeting. So for me, for example, I had at one point, um, I started out with 12 board members and grew to 21, but we would assign a board member uh, presentation time during the board meeting. And they asked one of these questions, right? So share a personal story about why you support. And if you assign them, follow up with them. This is where the follow up is so critical, right? Because I'm, I don't know if you can tell, I'm an organizer. I like to organize. So what I made the mistake of doing, and I will share this with you so you don't make this mistake either, is I made the mistake of let's get all of these assignments done for the year. So, um, if you're not doing this, make sure you have your board calendar already set for the year. So for me, my board meetings were on the second Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. So we knew that going in. So that's 12, technically 11 board meetings because the last one was an annual meeting. And so that means I could assign 11 different board members to do their uh, personal story or ask, answer each of these questions. So me and my organization genius I'm like, okay, let's get these assigned out, right? So 
Eddie, you have January, Sisto, you have February, Joe, you have March, da 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 da. Well, I failed to follow up, right? So they get to the board meeting. I'm like, okay, tell us about your, your moments for mission. You know, share a personal story about your why. That's easy. People can do that one. But then to share a fundraising strategy that you used or share when you had a conversation, I didn't make, I didn't create a safe space for my board members, right? And so in creating that safe space for your board members in the storytelling process, it's not, it's a signing, yes, but it's also following up, like reminding them they're busy. So remind them at least like two weeks before the meeting that don't forget you are assigned this month. And these are the three things that you're looking for. When you come into the meeting, you're going to have time to be able to share this information. So it's key to follow up with your board members. So don't make that mistake that I that I made. You know what? It's a great idea. Let's execute it. Let's get it done. It's done for the year. And then you fail to remind them, right? So don't do that. Don't do that. So learn from those mistakes. But this is a powerful way to get your board members um, involved and engaged. And let's say you remind them two weeks before and they haven't done it. Well, in that two-week time, they have time to do it. So that means you have someone that's actively out there you know, uh, looking to talk about fundraising, someone actively out there trying to have a conversation with a community member so that they can come back to the board and share how that went. And so again, that really is about inspiring them to get these things done. And so with the next um, slide, um, what we're gonna talk about is mingle moments. So let's say if you don't feel comfortable at this point doing, um, you know, assigning out, you can do mingle moments. You can start your board meetings off with mingle moments. And I like this um, mingle moments. And I will tell you about a board that I serve on and they do mingle moments very, very well. Um, and so let me picture this before we get into the slide, picture this. So the last board meeting I went to, they did a mingle moment and it was excellent. And so they had um, staff come in and they had the round tables, uh, like cocktail tables, and it was three staff members. And so during the CEO report, and bless your heart, if you have to do a CEO report, some organizations do. I never had to do one, thank God. Um, but for those that do have to do a CEO report, I think this is a brilliant way to incorporate storytelling in your CEO report and use that time wisely instead of just reporting back to the board, right? And so imagine this, this is what I went through and I wanna share it with you. So three tables, staff members at each table, board stands up and they each get three minutes or I think it was like four minutes to talk with that staff person on a particular topic. And so then that staff person shared what they were responsible for, what they were having challenges with, what they were able to accomplish. And then the bell rang, and then that group of board members rotated to the next staff person. Now, this is a larger board. Uh, I think we have like 24 board members or something like that. So, uh, you know, the groups were like groups of four and we could rotate to each air uh, to each staff person and learn about what they do um, and learn about some of their challenges and hear some of their stories. So mingle moments as personal stories can be great. Now, let's say if you're not there yet, right? This is what I would say. You can pair your board at the beginning of a meeting if you want it to. Um, so I would tell you this, for this board, um, the meeting starts at 12, but they ask us to be there at 11.45. So from 11.45 to 12, we do mingle moments and we eat, right? So that's 15 minutes. And so um, in that mingle moment, what we do, they pair a couple of board members together and they have them discuss a uh, related topic to the mission of the organization. 
and then they encourage conversation amongst the board members. So they might give us a question like, what inspired you to join the board of the organization and what keeps you engaged? Or they might give you another question about how has the organization's mission impacted you personally or professionally? Or can you share a story about a time when you witnessed the organization making a positive impact in someone's life? Uh, what do you want your impact to be on this board? And so you assign that question, one of those questions, and I try to give at least four as a sample. And then you have your board members give them five minutes to talk, you know, two and a half minutes each person. So why did you join this board? What inspired you to join this board? And they talk to each other and they share why they were inspired to join this board. And through these conversations, you will learn so much about why people join your board, why they wanna make an impact, what, you know, you will learn if um, their parents maybe benefited from a similar program. Um, you will learn um, if their child may be benefited from a, a similar program. You will learn what they're passionate about. I went through this exercise with a, a board member and um, found out that, you know, this was an education board. It was a literacy center board and found out that his mother was a high school dropout. And that's why he was very passionate about literacy because she had a, a challenge with literacy which she, it wasn't dealt with in the school system, so she chose to, to drop out. But those are the powerful stories that you get to unveil about your board members. And so then as the, the five minutes are up, right? So then the board chair or the CEO facilitates a reflection uh, moment and they offer the opportunity for one or two people to share what they discovered. And so in the sharing of what they discover, that's when people will say, you know what, this is why, this is why I'm passionate about this organization. You know, my mom dropped out of high school and she had challenges with literacy. She was dyslexic, no one helped her. And so because no one helped her, she felt forced to drop out. She, and, and so that's why literacy and making sure that no one else feels left behind in the society and that people get help, right? That's why I'm passionate about that. Without having those mingle moments, that would not have been discovered. So now you know, okay, what makes that board member tick? So if we have a program on X, Y, and Z, I know this board member may respond to that because they've told us what they're passionate about. And so it can be, I try to infuse all of these things, but these are different ways that you can do this. So if we start back from the beginning and we talk about mission moments, that's bringing those clients in, right? To tell their story or having a founder tell their story or um, having video that sh uh, tells that story. Those are your mission moments putting that in front of your board, engaging your board. It's gonna be twofold. If you do this every month, let's say if your board meetings are every month, again, that's 12 meetings. So that's 12 stories that your board members can go out and tell. Tell to the community, tell when they're at the Rotary meeting, tell when they're at the chamber meeting, tell when they're out networking, tell their spouse, Tell whoever is listening, you're giving them stories to be able to tell because people will remember stories. They won't necessarily remember the data, although you have to remember to speak the data language, they won't necessarily remember the data, but they will remember the stories because we are a storytelling culture. We've been doing it since the beginning of time. Cave writings on the wall, it tells a story. And so you're just tapping into that. So those are mission moments. The moments for mission, right? Again, you're giving your board members an opportunity to be, to get engaged in the mission and you're being strategic about it. Don't make the mistake that I made. It's not just about assigning 
who is going to do what? It's about the follow up, right? And reminding them at least two weeks before the board meeting. Okay, you remember this month, you are the uh, moment for mission person. And so you're going to be expected to present to the board, um, you know, five minutes on how, what you, what you did, you know, why you on this board or what fundraising strategy did you use or, you know, whatever that is that they choose to, or what, who did you talk to in the community about the organization? And then I'm giving you that. And then you have your mingle moments, right? So this is again for personal story, getting your board members to talk to each other. Because one of the things that we don't do well, especially when um, we're serving on these boards together, right? I serve on three boards. Let me be very clear. I serve on three boards. Some of these people I only see at the board meeting. I met them because of the organization. And I only see them sometimes during the board meeting. So I don't know them. And so if you're trying to get your team to row in the same direction, they need to know each other. That's how you build that trust because you all share in the same vision marching in the same direction. And so these mingle moments help you build that trust among each other. And so incorporate, I say incorporate them all, but if you can't incorporate them all, right? You can't incorporate them all. Mission moments, start your board meeting off with mission moments. In them with mission moments with the data. So you're speaking multiple languages to your board meeting. And one of the things that I found the most impactful for me has been the mingle moments. Those have been the most impactful for me as a board member coming onto a board. So mingle moments, quick exercises with your board, give them an opportunity to get to know each other and not only know each other, it also gives them an opportunity um, to you know, solidify why they're serving on this board. And you build that energy and you build that inspiration. Remember your board meetings should be cheerleader, cheerleading sessions. It's not just sitting there and doing reports and going back and forth, cheerleading. Get that mentality of engagement and cheerleading. And how am I going to make this a inspirational opportunity around storytelling? And you want to capture those stories. You want to remind them why they are there, why the mission is important, right? So storytelling is a powerful tool for engaging your board and inspiring them to act by crafting compelling stories that illustrate the values and mission of your organization, you can build trust and connect with your audience and create a more collaborative um, culture. So pro tip, that's what Memory Fox here, capture all the moments on video so you can repurpose them as Mission Moment Mondays on social media, right? Because you wanna tell these stories across many platforms. It's not just telling the stories in the boardroom. You want to repurpose content and make sure you do like Mission Moment Mondays. And that's where tools like Memory Fox comes in. And so storytelling, people are going to remember. Um, I saw some, uh, like Maya Angelou said, I see people remember how you made them feel. And so your goal with your board is to make sure that they see, taste, and smell the mission. And if they can see, taste, and smell the mission through storytelling, you are equipping some ambassadors and advocates that can go out to your community. You have an army now that can go out to your community and spread this. And they will be happy and proud to talk about your organization. But if you're just constantly feeding them 
well, we don't have any money or we can't, you know, we can't do that because, you know, no, none of the board is fundraising or we can't do that because, you know, we don't have the resources for it. That's not a cheerleading. That's not creating engagement. So create engagement around this. This is what you are there to do to inspire them. So with that, I will uh, see if there's any questions. I know we wanted to leave some time for some questions as well. This is my contact information, guys. That's my real cell phone number. I like to tell people that that's my real cell phone it number. It is. And I answer it. You do. <laughs> I do you answer do. myself. So that's, uh, again, that's what I have to say. And trust me, this works. It really works. It seems simplistic in nature, but it works. Start off with mission moments, please, please. And if that seems unattainable for you, then use the mingle moments. And I can tell you again, from serving on several boards, the mingle moments have been the most impactful for me as a new board member coming into an organization. Um, so it just depends on where you're at in your journey, but pick one or two of these to adopt and move forward with it. That's all you're doing, finding the best practices and moving forward with it. Don't keep doing the same thing that you're doing and expecting a different result. So embrace the storytelling journey because it will help you accomplish your goals and be strategic about it. So Sabrina, we do have a question in the chat yes. um, and I'm going to pull down so I can pull you up full screen. So one of our questions was when we were looking at your full list of different stories that you recommend, do you mm -hmm. have any recommendations on balance of different type of stories that you should have, or is that individual to the nonprofit? Um, that was something from Janine. Well, I think it's individual to the nonprofit because look, my nonprofit, I work with cute kids. So what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to put cute kids in front of the board all the time. Now, most of the time. Now, I did balance it with, okay, let's bring in some alumni because now you, you have the cute kids, but I want you to see what all that work, what it can accomplish, right? So at, um, maybe once or twice, I would sprinkle in an alumni. And so it really depends on what your strategic goal is. So for me, again, my strategic goal was to get a new building. So I planted those seeds with those kids and said, this is what I need right. you to talk about. So what is your goal? What are you, is your goal, you know, like fundraising goal because you want to accomplish X? Then you need to put those stories in front of them that will inspire them to accomplish X, right? So I would say individual, uh, individualize it based on what your goals are. And Sabrina, do you have any, what is your favorite question to ask during those mingle moments? I know you gave us a bunch, but what's your favorite if you had to pull out one? If I had to pull out one, I think the one that reveals the most about um, people is why do you serve on this board? It's a simple question, but it reveals the most because then you start to realize, oh, okay, you know, these people come with these backstories that you were not even aware of. You know, you see people in board rooms and sometimes you think they really have it together and they do, they have it together, they overcome a lot. But then you start to really peel back the onions, you know, the layers of the onions and you get to see the human side of them, like, you know, their family, um, if they're, if they're a organization was, uh, if the organization service could have impacted a family member or um, it makes it really more personal around that. And then also, it also helps board members um, who, you know, we all serve on these boards and we're like, mm, they just hear because their name is on the letterhead. Yeah, I've said that right. before. I've said it before. And you judge people. But then when you hear their why, you're like, oh, okay, they really have a why. They're not just here before the name on the letter on the letterhead. They really do have a connection to this mission. And we just have to figure out how to inspire them to act on that connection. So that would be my favorite one. Well, thank you, Sabrina. Thank you for sharing your time and your expertise. It is always a joy to be able to spend some time with you. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I am going to bring Danielle up on stage. So Danielle.
Danielle is going to bring us to our next phase. So Danielle, take it away. Hi, Celine, and thank you so much, Sabrina. That was amazing. And I know that you mentioned earlier that you had kind of a challenging morning. So we appreciate you getting it together and honestly yes. killing it and sharing so many yeah. amazing resources with our community. So thank you for, for sharing your time with us today. It was awesome to hear from you. And I will try, to, so my goal here is to just kind of walk everybody that wants to stick around um, about how Memory Fox works. I'll go through it pretty quickly because we did get started a little bit late. So if you have about 10 minutes to stick around, I'll do it pretty quick here and know that you can schedule some additional time with me to do a deep dive um, into how the platform works. And typically those meetings, uh, we like to go through your process and see how we can really see if Memory Fox can fit in and really help you collect some community stories. So I'm gonna share my, my screen here. And anybody that wants to stick around, I'd love to, to show you how our tool works. So let's make sure, hopefully, I don't have any technical difficulties here. Uh, let's see. Is this, hopefully, everyone can see my screen OK. And I'm going to hit present here. As you can see, that we um, use Canva, which is an awesome tool that we um, actually have an integration with as well. So hopefully y'all can see my screen. Okay, so Memory Box is a content collection and management tool designed specifically for nonprofits. And Sabrina hit on so many different things today with mission moments and things that you can share with our board, with your board. And we like to think that Memory Fox is a tool that can really help supplement those stories. When we talk about it, we talk a lot about humanizing your impact, humanizing your data's impact with stories. So a lot of times for us, that's pictures, videos, and testimonials, and we help you collect that stuff. And so we help you try to humanize that data with the faces of your organization, of your mission, and creating that emotional impact. And again, like Sabrina said, if you can share stories that really allow your board to connect with your mission and show them alongside those numbers, it really can create a deeper connection for them with your mission. And our collection tool can really help supplement that process and make it super easy for you to collect stories from your community that way. You're able to curate a story bank. So to us, this is giving you a ton of content that you can use at any time. So it's not just, oh, let me just ask for that story last second. Let me see if someone can send me something five minutes before the board meeting. Um, we make it really easy for you to start curating content so you have it ready to go for those meetings monthly. And you can pull stories for your annual reports and to have for during those meetings, whether it be at the beginning or at the end, like she talked about. So we help you curate that story bank. So you always have that stuff on hand. And we provide support, um, you know, like these, this amazing webinar today. Um, we also have podcasts. We have one-on-one -on -one customer support. We don't just hand you the tool and say, good luck. We support you and you're able to set up Zooms with our customer service team, as well as participate in our campfire community, which is a great opportunity to connect with other nonprofits and collaborate on storytelling. So I'll just dive in here quickly and give you a little bit of background about us. Um, and I know we mentioned this earlier, but we are a veteran owned organization and we built our tool alongside our local United Way. Um, so everything that we do is service focused and helps solve these three main problems, which was, you know, collecting content from your community can be really tough. You guys are so busy living your mission and doing the work and getting people to share those proof of impact stories for all the work that you do can be so challenging. So we make it super easy to do that. Organizing it on the back end. So just having one location where all that content lives, a library where it's all stored and organized and accessible. Um, and then lastly, just having a more efficient and modern way to tell your story. So what to do with that content. Um, and the layout of Memory Fox is collect, organize and share. So what you see here on the left side is what we call the storyteller side of the journey. And this is our collection tool. And you're able to share this with your community via QR code or a link that they can click on. And it's just a guided tool that's really designed to be an extension of your website, an extension of your brand and a space for your storytellers to share their story with you in their own words. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like here in a second. But what's great is that you get unlimited campaigns. So you can create these storyteller campaigns alongside all of your programs, 
all of the touch points where you are um, touching your community, whether it be someone donated, send them this link, ask them why they donated. Someone volunteered, send them this link, talk, have them talk about why they volunteered or what that experience was like. Um, you know, even sharing it with your board members, if you can get them to share their story about why they're on the board, you know, just creating campaigns around all those different touch points is so important to, to give your storytellers space to share stories with you all on their own time and in their own words. And then the organized side. So this is your dashboard where all of your content lives. It's your library where it's all stored and organized and accessible. So your story bank lives here. It's where you're creating these campaigns. Um, and then lastly, the share side. So you're able to create what we call story pages. Um, and that's a feature that we created within Memory Fox where you can display all of the content that you've collected on an independent web page, as well as our Canva integration, where you can, you can pull your content directly into your Canva account and put it into any of your projects that you're working on. And a lot of times people come into Memory Fox with one use case, they're like, oh, I have an anniversary coming up. It's our 50th anniversary. I want to collect stories to talk about our 50th anniversary and all the work that we've done, which is amazing and we love that use case. However, there are so many different ways and avenues to use Memory Fox. And there, there are things that within internally, you can collect stories from your staff. You can collect um, leadership stories like we were talking about, thank you videos. So, so many different things um, that you can collect stories about. And again, would love to meet with anybody to kind of do a deep dive into what all those different avenues are and how we can help you integrate all of these links into the different spaces that you're connecting with your community. So you can collect all different kinds of stories that reflect your mission. But this is the storyteller side of the journey. So this is our collection tool. And I'll just show you this, this side real quick here. where you are able to send this, like I mentioned, with your community via QR code or a link that gets generated on the back end. And you just send this over to them however you're connecting with them. So what's nice is once they click on this, um, there is no download required. There is no password or login to remember. It just takes them right to the secure page here. Um, where they can click on this link. And what's nice is it's customized to your organization. So your logo appears here. And this is the name of the campaign, which is what you want to collect stories around. So you name the campaign, that anniversary campaign, um, board stories, volunteer stories from your community, whatever it is that kind of is that title. Um, and then this is the description, the why you're asking people to share. And they'll hit start. This next screen here is going to be your user data. So you can collect any sort of user data along the way here. And you can do as many fields here as you want and make each one optional or mandatory. And then your consent language. So this is where you're going to get people to legally agree to share that content with you. So you can use it for whatever that you um, need it to, whatever you need to use it for. So be really specific here so that they know what you're going to do with that content. And they have to check this box to continue. So this next step here is going to be your storyteller prompts. So this is where you're guiding people to share those really specific stories that are going to reflect your mission. So this is that opportunity to be really intentional about the type of story that you want to engage them to tell, to tell you while giving them space to say it in their own words. So in these prompts, you can do as many as you want here and you know, it's set up like a progress tracker to kind of encourage them to share more than one story. But really, you can do just one story per campaign, or you can do as many as you want. So, for example, if someone chooses a thank you message, right within this right within this recording screen, they're reminded of what to talk about right while they're recording. So, what's nice about this screen is that they can submit a video, a photo, text only, or they can upload something already on their phone that they've pre-recorded. Or maybe they just want to send 20 pictures over to you from, from when they volunteered that day. So this step really eliminates those file sharing issues and makes it super simple for your storyteller to very quickly, you know, share that story in their own words, you know, submit the content really easily, whether they have an Android or an iPhone, it's a 30 second video. A 20 minute video just makes it super simple for them to transfer that file over to you and then they are done. So it gives them a little confetti, letting them know that they have successfully sent in that piece of content to you. In this top right hand corner, they can review what they've sent into you. They can continue to go back and share more stories. 
Um, and then this last button here is a redirect. So this is kind of designed to kind of close the loop on that journey and take them to your website, a secure donation page, really wherever you want to send them. Because again, this collection tool is designed to be an extension of your website, your branding. So when they're sharing through here, we're creating a space that really reflects your organization so they feel like they're sharing with you specifically. And that brings me to my next piece, which is when they share with you, the content is owned by your organization as well. So when they're sharing directly with your organization, it all starts living in the story bank here. And this is where everything gets tagged and organized automatically by campaign, by question that you've asked in this step here. So these, you can search by these questions, you can search by this campaign name, and it's all correlated and tagged and organized here and super simple for you to then funnel down and search for that content and find it when you need it. And what's really great as well is that the most recent stuff always populates at the top here. So you can run as many campaigns at one time as you would like. And the most recent stuff will populate here, which once you've received that piece of content, you can pop it open and tag it as your annual report. And you can create those internal search tags as well so that when it's time to make that annual report, you can search by that tag and then put it in your annual report. So super easy to keep things stored and organized and accessible and it all lives here in one place. We'll give you admin seats for all your different departments so other people can have access to this content as well. And you get unlimited storage within this cloud-based tool as well. Um, and the last piece is the share side and I'm almost done here. So hang on with me for a couple minute, more minutes here and we'll, we'll give you back your time. But um, I appreciate all of you that have, have stuck around to, to learn a little bit about our tool. Um, so the last side is the share side of things. So aside from being able to download all this original content from your library right here, you're also able to create what we call story pages. And this is just a really simple website builder where you can either drag and drop content directly into an independent web page here, or you can set it up so that it automatically sends content into one of these story pages. And this is just a shareable URL that you can embed into your newsletter, into your website. You can, you can um, put it into your annual reports as well and pull it up during your meetings. So just really simple web pages that display that content. Um, and lastly, our Canva integration. So super simple for you to search by Canva or search by Memory Fox in your Canva store. And then on the left side of that account, you'll see all of your content pulled directly into your Canva account. And you can super easily pull all that content into a project that you're working on. And that is really how Memory Fox works. So the basics of it are collect, organize, and share. We make it super simple for you to make space for your community to share stories, keeping it all stored and organized and accessible in one place downloadable and you can take it to any any reports that you need to your website your social media wherever you need to tell those stories we make it super easy for you to take it there so in terms of how the pricing works it's all based on a subscription and on year 990 so we mirror our pricing and try to make it accessible for every size nonprofit and within those accounts, we do unlimited storage, unlimited campaigns, and admin seats. You get that customer support from our team. You can set up Zooms with us to make sure that all your campaigns are working to the best of their ability. And we also offer community collaboration, allowing you to meet with other nonprofits within our community. So feel free to scan this QR code here and schedule some time to meet with me. We'll talk about pricing that reflects your 990 and how we can make it affordable to you all. Um, so I'd love to meet with any of you to do a deeper dive. And thank you so much for sticking around and learning about Memory Fox. Um, and that is all I have for you today. And I think that's it. I don't know if um, we're going to have anybody else hop on, but we'll just give everybody back your time. So thank you all so much for sticking around. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Danielle. And thanks, everybody. We will see you next time.